dear colleagues, thanks for having me in this celebration of the Anti-Corruption Day. It is a pleasure to be with you. As you know, I am the chair of Transparency International. Transparency International is a movement, a global movement. We are present in more than 100 countries around the world. We work collectively uh, and uh, in a organized and collaborative way. And we have uh, the honor to have TI Portugal as one of our members, working very hard at the local and domestic level, but also one of our main uh, members contributing to the global efforts like uh, the preparation of our strategies and uh, the implementation of our strategies even beyond your territory. So thank you very much, Transparency Portugal, for having me today. Um, as, as you know, we have been saying for years that corruption is a, a global problem that erodes uh, democracy. This is more evident than ever in our times. We have been saying that corruption facilitates kleptocracies and autocracies. No need for examples this year. Um, the corruption also affects the quality of representation, participation, and inclusiveness in our democracies. There is no single characteristic of democracies you can take whatever definition you want, which is not affected in detriment by the existence of corruption. But corruption affects our rights, our uh, future, our possibilities, the quality of life of people. It increases poverty. And um, the, the fight against corruption that we collectively um, take together as, as our work every day is the fight for a better future, is the fight for the common good, is the fight for creating a culture of integrity, um, a culture where uh, integrity and the restoration or the rebuilding of consensus values in society uh, serves as the pillars of a stronger democracies. And corruption is a global problem. There is no country that can say, I have nothing to do about corruption. The money that sto is stolen in countries perceived as very corrupt, like Africa or Latin America, this money stolen there ends in Europe, ends in the US, ends in Canada. And, and we have to uh, collaborate in order to guarantee that this facilitation of corruption stops. We always talk about gatekeepers, and probably you will be talking about them in the conference. In my view, um, we have normally uh, restrict that conversation to bankers, lawyers, accountants and make it broader to uh, art dealer or real estate industry. In fact, they are not the only gatekeepers that sometimes act as enablers of corruption. We have also legislation and uh, court decisions, and we have had in Europe a very recent one, that really creates the opportunities uh, the, um, the space for corrupt actors to keep on moving with impunity. We have to close those windows of opportunities, and we have to guarantee that there is no impunity. One of the questions that uh, you ask when you present the conference or you announce the conference is, what else should we be doing? And uh, of course, we have been working on Transparency International 30 years now. We have been working in uh, the preparation of what I call the legal infrastructure, the legal institutional infrastructure uh, against corruption. We have the conventions, the laws, the anti-corruption offices, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you, we have to collectively put that into action to make that work effectively. And I always use a phrase to, 
to synthesize my proposal to the question, what should we do? We need to have more information, more integrity, less impunity, and less indifference. And we have to do this collectively, public and private sector, civil society organizations, academics, journalists, and individual citizens. I uh, hope uh, you have a very nice anti-corruption day. And thank you very much again to TI Portugal for your help at the global sphere and your work at Portugal. Thank you very much.